All right, so today we're gonna to be making um, a what I've called a 15 minute flower. And what I love about these flowers is that they can make be made with mixed fibers. Um, I think they also solve a lot of problems that we have with macrame flowers that tend to take kind of forever um, to make. So these are much faster in keeping with the name. They take about 15 minutes each. Um, and they're just great ways to use. Uh, you could do this with merino. You could do this, uh, yeah, with our merino art yarn. You could do it with our chiffon silks. Um, you can certainly do it with a range of cottons. And today we'll be focusing on the sari and cotton versions. So this flower is made with three, its petals are made with a three mil single strand recycled cotton available in our shop. And for the middle, I've used um, one of our sari ribbons. And then for this one, I've done the exact opposite. So for the petals, I've used um, one of our uh, sari uh, ribbon, recycled sari ribbon skeins. And for the middle, I've used our three mil single strand um, recycled cotton. So what you'll need to begin is some three mil single strand recycled cotton available in our shop. I'm gonna make, we're gonna make two flowers together. I'll show you how to make one with the sari and one with the cotton. So I'm using some sari ribbons. This is Dusty Rose, and then we'll also be working with Jupiter. Um, not necessary, but definitely super helpful is our one millimeter two ply cotton rope. These little cones are just kind of a miracle. I like using a really thin cotton for the wrapping part at the base of the flower. The smaller it is, the tighter wrap you're gonna be able to get, and that's just what you're looking for. Um, a crochet hook. So this is a very helpful tool. I guarantee you, you will use it extensively in your macrame weaving um, or various other fiber craft um, pursuits. So I'm using a 3.5 millimeter uh, crochet hook. I could probably do a little bit better with a four millimeter, but this is what I have, so it's what I'm gonna use. You want a sharp pair of scissors? I work extensively with Ginger, which is a German stainless steel scissor brand. Um, I find it to be incredibly, incredibly sharp and the quality is unmatched. Um, because it's made with stainless steel, you can keep sharpening it. So these are the sorts of scissors that will last you a lifetime. And I'm not being paid by Ginger to say that, but I would be if you're listening. Um, this, we will need a little bit of crafting wire. Um, so available in any Hobby Lobby Michaels craft store, it's probably gonna be in the jewelry section. This is another optional element that I think brings so much beauty to the flowers. So these are our um, metal, uh, so they're metallic leaves, and this is the copper color, also available in Unfettered Co. Our shop. Um, finally, you'll be working with um, polythylene plastic tubing. So this can be found in any hardware store. Um, it's most likely in the plumbing section. Um, you want to look for the opaque version because the clear plastic is a little bit stickier in material and you need it, need it to be really smooth because you're gonna be using it to slide your fibers in and out of. Um, you're only gonna need about a six to seven inch portion um, for this project, but it seems to come only in this big roll, so that way you get a lifetime supply. Okay, just drop my metal here, but otherwise let's get going. So we'll start by creating the middle for both of our flowers. Um, first, I'll work with cotton. So you just want to um, fold the fiber back on itself to create loops. This is kind of exactly what you do if you were making a pom-pom in the beginning stages. So you want it to be kind of well bunched together and you sort of want for your um, fibers to all be folded at the same spot, so just as even as possible and in as round a shape as possible. So that's kind of what the middle of the flower is going to look like, and I'm happy with that. So once you're at a place where you think it's going to be good, you want to use your smaller rope or string. So again, this is where I'm using the one millimeter two ply, and I'm just going to tie a really tight knot about two thirds of the way up the little fiber bundle tight knot done so that I can just put my middle off to the side you could be really experimental with your middles um, you could use um, you could cut them and then brush them out for a kind of different look this is going to be for the the flower with a cotton petal and sari middle so I'm just doing the same thing here the really nice thing about sari is that in one skein, you because you're getting different recycled silks sewn in, sometimes there's some color variation, so you can even just get like a very, really sort of differentiated, beautiful effect um, 
along the flower. So I'm happy with the way that that looks. I'm going to do the same thing here with the help of my one mill. I'm going to leave one end of it really long and try and keep one end short. So for this tying part, um, you'll want to use about a 12 foot length of one mil rope. And the reason for this is that you're going to use it to wrap the flower's entire base. Okay, so I'm going to put that off to the side. Now, for what I just did, I was probably using six, six foot lengths of both the sari and the cotton, and that's going to be the exact same length you'll be using for your petals. So that's about one wingspan for me. Um, okay, now it's time to create the petals, and this is where we're going to use that cut piece of six inch or seven inch polyphylene tubing. This is just like knitting when you're casting stitches onto a needle. So start with about a four, um, four inch length on your on one side. I forgot to explain what I'm doing. Okay, you're looping the sari over the plastic tube and then bringing it around behind itself and pulling it through. So that's going to be one stitch. This is going to be two. It gets a little bit easier um, a few stitches in when you've sort of got it secure against the plastic tubing. I'm just going to count these out loud because if I don't, it's a bit of a nightmare and I have to go back and count them all. And these are supposed to be 15 minute flowers rather than 20 minute flowers. So we're going to do about 22 stitches here. So I've got four already. This is five. Six, so you're just going all the way up the tube. Seven, you want your tension to be just about right so that you can slide the fiber easily, eight, up the tube, um, but it's not loose enough that it keeps falling off. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, might have to slide it down a little bit to create space, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Sometimes sari has, it sheds um, silks, which are kind of beautiful um, because they're sort of organic and they feel like the texture, they look like the texture that a flower would in nature as well. So it's always nice when your fiber complements what you're actually trying to represent. Okay, so because the sari is knotted in um, at certain points, if you have any of those little knotted spots that kind of stick out, you can cut those off at this point. And I don't know if you can see it, but this is one of those circumstances where we had two slightly different colors. So we're gonna have the petal of our flower is also gonna um, have two different shades with it. I think it will just be a really beautiful effect. Okay, this is what um, your stitches should look like. I've got 22 on here. It's in a nice sort of tight-ish um, band a lot around the tube. That's when I need to use my craft wire. You stick it all the way through the tube so it should come out the other end, keep sticking it through, and then come to the end of your long piece of fiber. Um, and you almost want to treat this like a hook or it's yeah it's a bit like a hook or a needle um, you hook it on towards the end of the the length and then you just pull it through the whole tube so as you can see the tube is the fiber is sliding off the tube which is great that's exactly what i want and sometimes you have to use a little bit of strength there but okay so i want for that to loop to come all the way through and you'll know when it's come through because the end of your um you just won't be able to pull it any further. So here you get to play around with tension, right? If you want more tension, you can slide it up. If you want less tension, you can loosen it all the way down. So you wanna have um, a pedal that's kind of, you don't want it to be super tight, but you also don't want it to be super floppy. So stitches on the outside, and then you form, you just loop it around so that it looks kind of like a bonnet. Now you need to use your crochet hook. So what you're doing is the longer piece of sari fiber, you're going to loop through the bottom of the petal on the opposite sides that the fibers are coming out. So with the dull end of your crochet hook, 
just kind of ease it into one of the bottom loops of your petal and then you'll hook on you'll hook the sari fiber in and just pull it through gently and there you go you have that kind of bonnet shaped petal you can play around again a little bit with tension till you get the shape of your petal just right and then once you're happy with where it is just give your sari fiber um, one half knot and there you go that's one petal okay so that this video wouldn't take forever i've actually gotten ahead of myself and prepared my petals so i need five five is the magic number for a flower i think and so let's put this one together so this is the three millimeter single strand middle that we just created not too long ago and we're just going to take each of our five petals and situate them uh, all the way around that middle bundle. This takes a little bit of practice and also coordination, which sometimes I have and sometimes I don't. So once you've got them so that they're around the base of the middle part of the flower, I think that's called a pistil, but I'm not too sure. Then you, you with that same um, one mil two ply rope that you use to attach the middle bundle, you're just gonna wrap all the way you're going to wrap tightly and as high up onto the petals as you can get. So just keep wrapping uh, maybe six or so times. At that point, you want to stop and do a little bit of a check-in. So you can now control where your petals are sitting. You want them kind of evenly dispersed. Also, you might notice they're kind of flopping down. So what I always do at this point is I hold the flower up and then I pull each longer strand of sari in so that it's it it's tense up against the middle and the petal it, at the petal ends up kind of standing up just like that and you've you don't want to pull the shorter saris because that will um, mess up the articulation of your petals but the longer ones definitely do so with okay keep wrapping and so now i feel really happy with where that flower is at so I'm just gonna show you quickly here with this one how I would incorporate some of the metal leaves if that's what you're up to. So with the help of my one mill, I'm gonna um, just loop it into the little hole at the base of the leaf. And that way it will at least be somewhat attached to the flower. And then you can play around with where you want your leaf to sit. I'm just gonna use one for this one. Um, and then you wanna just wrap it around the base tightly and try and get as high up onto the leaf as you can get. And that will give it the sort of the tension that you need to hold it in place. Wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. Okay, when I'm happy with the tension and I think it's gonna to hold together well, I'm just gonna tie this off with two clove hitches, again, really tightly. Okay. And then I'm gonna have the opportunity to play around a little bit with where the leaf is sitting and how the petals are sitting as well. There, sorry, silk flower. So these tailings you can cut off. I mean, you could cut this up here. Um, this works, I think, as a beautiful standalone item. Um, and it, I think it also works beautifully if you're bringing it into other tapestries with different backgrounds. So there we go. Sorry, silk flower finished. Let's move on to creating the cotton version, which is exactly the same method. So I've got my six foot piece of three mil, and I'm just gonna do the same thing. So I'll leave about five inches loop it over top of the plastic tube and then pull it through. That's one stitch, two, three, four. Here I'm gonna do 22 as well because it's just my lucky number. Five used to be my basketball number. Six, seven, I found that three mil is the maximum width of cotton that will fit through this tube comfortably. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
16, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, two more. One, I hope I counted right, two. Okay, so that's how that's gonna look. You make sure that at this point that your tension is even and they're even distances apart. And then you bring the wire back through the tube. So, this is kind of a fun technique. Um, I think it has wider applications as well. And I'll, something that I'll be doing in the coming weeks is kind of exploring that. So I'm gonna pull my cotton all the way through the tube. Perfect. And then sometimes it comes right off of the tube as it slipped off with the sari silk and sometimes it stays on. If it stays on, you just pull it off and then you start to form your petal. So stitch is always on the outside of the petal. I'm just getting my tension right. So that's kind of where I want it to sit right there. Grab your crochet hook with the dull end, go into one of the loops on the base of your petal, and then you're hooking through the longer length of fiber. Oops. I think that this hook is a little bit too small for this cotton, but it can work. All right, there we go. Okay, once you're happy with the shape of the petal, just give it a half knot to secure it in place. And then, ta-da, I've got my other four petals prepared and ready to go. So let's grab the sari middle that we created and start to situate the petals around their middle. once I've got them fairly evenly dispersed then I'm going to grab that longer length of one millimeter wrapping string that I set up and just do the same thing so wrap it nice and tightly get as high up onto the base of the petal as I can and then at this point we're about midway through the wrapping so it's time to pull the longer lengths of cotton tight to fix any issues with tension that might be popping up. Oh, where's that one? There. Okay. Make any last minute adjustments to the way that the petals are sitting and then come back to your wrapping, wrap maybe five or six more times. And then when you're happy with the finished product, you can just do a double Clove hitch nice and tightly. And there you go. Ta da! <laughs> so, I hope that this little tutorial has proven valuable for you. I hope you have fun making these. What I find that I've sort of specialized in um, in my own macrame journey is like developing um, innovative little smaller designs that can be infinitely reproduced and used in larger pieces as well. I think there's really something beautiful about that and I hope that you play along. Thanks so much for tuning in and see you next time.